in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use the glob module to create a program that will take input from the user and return a list of all the files in the current folder containing what the user input. Let me demonstrate. Over here, I have the code to my program. Let me run this. Over here, we can input any text we like. For example, if I input birthday and press enter, this will return a list of all the current files that contain birthday. Currently, I am in desktop, and here are eight text files. According to our list, there is no birthday in text number one. Let's have a look. And there is no birthday. No birthday in number two, or no birthday in number three. Number four, there's no birthday. But in text five, which is listed here, there should be a birthday in it. Let's have a look. Sure enough, we see birthday. There's no birthday in number six. There's a birthday in number seven. And there is no birthday in number eight. Currently, I only have eight text files, but imagine if we have millions of files, each containing important information, and one day you want to retrieve a specific piece of information, but you forgot which file you contained it. It will be difficult to look through all the files to find that information. But if you can remember a small piece of that file, for example, you remember you specified your mom's birthday in it, you can simply use this program, type in your mom's birthday, and it will return a list of all the files containing your mom's birthday. Now, before we jump into how to create this code, I will teach you how to use the glob module. I'll create a new file. Over here, I will import the glob module. So import glob. Now, if I print glob dot glob with brackets and quotes. If I put an asterisk, this asterisk means everything. So when I run this, first I have to save this file. I'll save it in desktop. I'll name it try2. This is a list of all the files and folders and applications currently in desktop. This is a bit messy. Maybe we only want to list all the text files. But over here, all the videos are listed and all the folders. To, to list all the text files, after this asterisk, we add dot txt. This means because asterisk means everything, and then we add a dot txt, this will return a list of that has everything, but must end with dot txt. So if I run this module, over here we get a small list of all the text files in desktop. Or maybe we want to list all the videos, so instead of dot txt, we can return everything in the current folder that ends with dot mp4. Let me run this. Over here, we have all the mp4 files in desktop. Now, we don't have to put this asterisk in the beginning. 
For example, if we want to list everything in desktop that begins with G, all we have to do is print glob dot glob. In these quotes, we have a G and then an asterisk, so it has to begin with G and it can end with anything. Let me run this. Currently, we only have this games in desktop that begins with G. This asterisk can also go in the middle of two characters or more than two characters. For example, I want to find all the files that begin with D, with an asterisk, and ends with S. So this will return a list of all the files that begin with D, ends with S, and there can be anything in the middle. If I run this, and currently we only have this devices in desktop that begins with D and ends with S. Now that we've learned the glob module, let's go to this program. We import glob. Now we define a variable called text, and we assign an input function to it. This will take input from the user and store it in this variable. Now we use a for loop for file in glob dot glob. As we just learned, this will return a list of all the files in the current folder that end with dot txt. Now we have this open function, which I'm going to teach you how to use right now. Let me first make this a bit smaller. With this, op with this open function, we can open any file in the current folder. For example, I'm opening 3.txt, but we're just opening it. We're not doing anything else. Right now, we want to read its contents, so we assign this read function to it. So it's a R in two quotes. Now we are opening this file and reading it. We will store this in a variable. So with open 3.txt with the read function as f, I name this variable f. Now all this is stored in f, but to get the, to get exactly what is inside here, we have to add this read function. So if we type f dot read, it will contain everything that's in 3.txt. So if I print this and I run this, I'll save this as try three. Now, we have everything that's inside 3.txt. So basically, with this open function, we're opening this text. We are assigning, assigning this read function to it so we can read its contents. And then we print out what's inside it. Back to this program. With open file, we define file here. So it's the it's the file in this list of files in the current folder that ends with .txt. We open the file, we assign the read function to it, and we store it in this variable called f. Now we have an if statement. If text, over here we define text. It's what the user input. If text is in f.read, which is a string of everything that's inside file, print file. So we are printing the name of the file. So we'll run this again. This time, I want to find all the files that contain the word Bob. If I press enter, 
Oops, there are no files that contain the word Bob. Let me rerun this, and I will find all the files that contain contain the word I. Over here, we have I in one dot txt, three dot txt, and six dot txt. This is the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned how to create this program. If you have any questions, please contact me. We can discuss the problem, and hopefully, I can help you understand everything you want to know. Have a nice day.